Hey guys, I'm very sorry about the poor visual quality of this video uh, as I don't have time to re-record the video because I only have the car for today. Please excuse me and I'll make sure to have the best recording equipment and quality in the next video you're going to see. Thank you for your understanding and enjoy nevertheless. Hey guys, all cars and bikes here and today we are driving this beautiful Skoda Octavia RS gas engine with 245 horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque. Let's get right into it. Now, we've already test-driven a Skoda Octavia and the technologies inside are pretty much the same. Uh, whether it's the Columbus or the, the digital cockpit, which is 10 inches, it's the same. There is a slight difference in engines though, which is, it's not a diesel, it's a gasoline engine and it has 245 horsepower on paper, of course. I'd say 260 maybe in real life. Uh, this car is a beast compared to what we've driven so far, uh, I mean the Octavia that we've driven, and let's get to it because, wow, we've talked about interior before in the Octavia, so let's not make it any longer, and let's test drive this, this beautiful thing. Seatbelt on for safety, as always. Ah. <sighs> It's paired with an automatic gearbox. You can only get this pairing nowadays. There's no diesel RS Octavia, there's no manual. Sadly, yes, but with automatic, it's just as much fun as it is with, with manual. Maybe even more thanks to the paddle shifters. Uh, let's talk about what's different in this car. Uh, there are a few things that are different to the basic spec Octavia. Number one being the suspension. It's a bit more sporty. It's of course, uh, a bit more stiff but it still has that nice feeling responsive of course uh, but there's a slight well it's both downside and an upside it's 15 millimeters lower than the basic spec Octavia yes it's great for the handling and for the sporty feeling but for driving over curbs which of course you shouldn't do even in a, in a normal Octavia it's not good that's okay, we're not gonna do that today. We're only going to test drive this thing. Well, not only we're going to get the most of it or hope to get the most of this car on the road, uh, legally avail available, what is, of course. We're not gonna go over 90 and 130. Definitely. Definitely. I told you we would have an RS model in the, in the next week, which is this week. And we, we actually got it. I didn't think it would, you know, we would get to it, but my colleague was kind enough to lend me this car for, for today, and I am able to test drive it. This car has a few driving modes. It is not equipped with the SCC or DCC, which is very good because those things tend to go bad at about 100,000 kilometers. This is practically brand new. It only has 900 kilometers so far. Uh, 941 as of right now and those modes are echo normal sport and individual right now we're going to be driving in normal we're not even going to engage eco on this ride sorry my man uh, we're gonna go into sport and individual though throughout different parts of this drive right now let's stay in normal we are coasting through the city as you can see the DSG 
automatic gearbox is capable of coasting it is capable of going into neutral on its own and giving you pretty much zero consumption while you're doing that by the way i've already test drove this or had this thing for about 80 kilometers now and uh, the average consumption for highway is eight liters and i was going somewhere along 150 160 kilometers an hour so the consumption is actually very good now what these modes do are they change the behavior of drive wow that was a suicidal bird they change the behavior of the steering wheel the dsg gearbox and the engine power basically so in eco the car is going to be again as in every skoda car the performance is going to be uh very limited it's going to be even slow you could say it's going to be limited to 130 kilometers an hour and we don't want that in a car like this you don't really buy the car for driving with eco mode <laughs> you don't normal is the way it was built basically there's nothing different with the car or it's not sporty it's not very soft it's just the way it's it was built and in sport mode we get this uh i don't want to say beast because there are still much stronger cars out there and sportier and faster but for a skoda you get a beast this car stiffens the gearbox works flawlessly upshifts so fast downshifts even faster with auto rev matching uh this car just works very good in sport mode and we're going to pop it into that for the launch control as well As you can see, the car is pretty fast. Of course, we're still in D mode or normal mode, which isn't going to give you the feeling of the fast car. And you also have to press on the uh, on the gas pedal very, very hard. While in normal mode, it's still a regular gas car. So it needs, with a turbo, so it needs a few RPMs to actually work properly. But once you pop it into sport, oh my Lord. And now my famous suspension test on this road. Uh, that road is almost finished, so we're gonna have to find a different place. But this car is very stiff, and I can feel that on. <laughs> I can't even talk pro <coughs> properly in this car. It's very stiff. But that's a good thing in an RS Octavia, of course. You'd be expecting it to be stiff. So, Skoda, thumbs up for its suspension on this car. Uh, if you had the DCC, of course, you could change the comfort, but again, there's no point in doing that to an RS car, so... For me, that really has zero points by DCC in a car like this. Now, we are approaching the point where we do the 0 to 100, and in this car, you also have launch control. We're gonna quickly pop it into sport mode, and in a set, we're going to turn off start stop system and turn on or off ESC sport so we're going to get sporty traction control basically and slide control we're gonna do this fast because the uh, the guy on the little motorbike is behind us as well as a truck he's not there right now but that's fine so we're in these settings now you have to pin the brake down as well as the throttle it's going to engage launch control and then we launch and let's do the launch control Enjoy. And to zero. Oh my God. <laughs> this was so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the car had a little there was a little slight delay before it launched, but the feeling you get once you launch it, wow, Skoda, this is so good. So good. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Uh, we're not gonna do that again. I don't think there's going to be a spot. We can try if there's a spot to do it again. But <laughs> let's talk about the sport mode that we are in right now. Uh, I've popped it into that just for this thing because I think you have to be in sport mode to engage launch control. But this car, pretty much gives you everything in sport so driving dynamics steering uh, the powertrain engine sound also adaptive cruise control becomes sporty wow 
I think even light assistance becomes sporty. Oh my lord, what is sport light assistance? I've never actually figured it out after one year and some and four months of selling Skodas. I don't know what sport light assistance is. I'm, not, I'm never going to know, and I don't couldn't care less, to be honest. But driving dynamics is how the shifter works. So if it shifts faster or slower, and if it lets the uh, the engine ref as much as it did in launch control, steering is the steering wheel, of course. That's pretty self-explanatory. By the way, this car sits very good. Plants it in the ground, pretty much. So this is very good Skoda. Drive is the powertrain. So how much power is there going to be while you're pressing on the accelerator pedal? Engine sound is what you hear. Uh, this is not the engine sound. This is not the exhaust sound. This is a, um, it's an artificial sound through some speakers that's being played into the car as you step on the accelerator. So we can turn that off later, uh, but not now. ACC, don't know, light assistant, don't know, air, air conditioning and normal. So sport mode basically transfers this car into a as I said before, beast for a Skoda car. And it's so good, fast. I like it very much. And if I could, I would have this car instead of the Octavia, the diesel one, but hey, not possible for me. You know what part is it? Uh, we're going to go into manual mode just by pressing one of the paddles here and now we're shifting with the paddles and it's a sporty time drive. Enjoy. I'm really enjoying this car. Uh, I had it for one day last year. Then we didn't have an RS Octavia in the company and now we have it. And I'm enjoying it very much. As I said, I'm not going to be able to have it every day, but this is great. That sports drive, the car felt, I felt very comfortable in the car. I felt I could flick it around the corners easily. Not much to say about it, really. Yep, this is good. <laughs> We're gonna stay in the paddle shifters mode because it just feels the most natural to me in a car like this to shift myself, not letting the automatic gearbox do it, so. And I would recommend everyone, if you ever get to drive a car like this, like a sporty car, which is automatic with paddle shifters, get to feel the car, get to feel the engine, get to feel how comfortable you are in the car. Uh, it's going to change so much once you shift yourself, once you don't let the car shift, the drive, your driving is going to, of course, improve because you're going to have to react to the engine. And oh my lord! Yep, this is one of the dream cars that are on my list. I'm not saying it's the dream car; it's one of dream cars. What I don't like about this car, 
is not anything that is drivetrain related or anything that is the infotainment related, of course, except this one, this is going to be the same issue uh, as it was in my Octavia. An issue with this car is the price, or actually the issue with this car. This car starts at 1,030,000 chick rounds, which is, again, approximately 40,000 euros. Yes, about 40,000 euros, which is just too much for a car like this. For 30,000 euros, you're gonna get an i30N Hyundai, which has more power, also comes in manual. I don't know, for the money that you get, it's not very much, or, I mean, it's great value, of course, but there are just better cars out there for as much money as you put in this, so. But driving it just feels good. And of course, it's a Skoda car, so. Just the fact that you get a Skoda car that is equipped with a two liter, of course, four cylinder, but 245 horsepower, 370 newton meters of torque. Incredible. I have no clue how Skoda puts three cylinder engines in everything, and they only have well, two good engines right now. The 206 kilowatts in a Superb and this one in Octavia. Actually, I feel that there's going to be time for one more launch control, so let's do that again, because that was that was too much fun. Stop uh, somewhere here. Should be easily able to get to 100 from here. And now, uh, you have to go into Sport, so we have to pop it into Sport again, S1. And now, as we did before, pin the brake, throttle, nothing behind us, and let's go. Oh my lord, this was even better, I guess. Oh no! Oh no! There's, that's a difference of like 20 meters and it's raining here. Oh well, that's life. Uh, we're going to go on the highway now. I'm smiling, by the way, I'm still smiling because the launch control is just too good in this car. Nope, doesn't let you slide. Even if with ESC Sport, the car just doesn't let you slide. So no point in doing that at least on the road. Of course, if you had more space, you could probably make it slide, but just through power shear, nope. See, no chance. No, see, it's wet, so I'm not gonna be overshooting it like I usually do. See, wouldn't let me slide anyway. <laughs> Actually, we do get wheel spin in third gear. No way. Somehow Skoda has managed to let us wheel spin in third gear. <laughs> what the actual? There's no way that a car like this makes. Okay, I'm very much impressed by the powertrain of this car. I haven't expected it to be that good. Now, we're on the highway, so we're gonna get, get up to 160 approximately because this car can easily make that as your daily drive at 160. Now 160, uh, seventh speed, and we're averaging, we're going six liters, 100 kilometers. There's a car in front of us, of course, but we're going to get maximum seven per 100 at this speed. Again, this is incredible. We're highway completely straight, six liters, 160. How? Woo! How is that possible? It's a, it's a sports car. How do you get six liters of consumption on a sports car? Of course, average is going to be higher because you're not driving on the highway only. Well, some of us are. This car is just so good. Easily reaches 180 in an uphill 
again, it's a Skoda car. I'm, I'm, I'm actually impressed. I'm not surprised that a car can do this. I'm surprised that a Skoda car can do this. And without any problems, really. Oh, can we try 200? I'm not very sure about that, but you know, why not? That's gonna be there easily, but can't see the return. Yep, easy, 210. <laughs> oh my lord, this is just incredible. Now, a lot of the times there's cops here, so I'm gonna slow down here. But this car just effortlessly reaches, this, of course, yes, it was downhill, but again, steady. 176 and we're doing 6.6. This is slightly downhill, this part of the highway, but still. No problem reaching 200 again. Totally okay. And this car is still planted, like, I don't get this. I, I would love to take this thing to a track and see how it actually goes on the track, but we're not gonna be allowed to do that any day or with this car. So hopefully we get, do get the chance to go to a track day in any of our cars. I was thinking of taking the Abarth to a track day. Probably will. Now, as always in this port, we're going to talk about my driving impressions and if you could hear me through the video, you're going to know that I'm excited about driving this car and I'm very surprised about how this car actually goes. It has so much power, it, I'm feeling very comfortable and safe in this car because it, it's very planted to the ground. And there seems to be no issue with you going over 200 and the car is still firm, easy to control. And I haven't felt this safe in a car uh, while driving fast, of course, in a long time. So, yep, this is a huge yes for me. This is still very good. This is very good, yep. And now, time for the ultimate all cars and bikes rating of this car. And I have to say that if it were not for the infotainment, this would get a hundred. But I just can't give it the benefit of giving the car more just because of the engine. And yes, of course, it's going to receive a higher score, but with the infotainment that is still here, which is still present, of course, I didn't even touch it throughout this drive, but it's still here. And if you need anything, you're going to have, go, have to go through it. So I will continue saying that until Skoda changes it for better, as it is in Karok, Kodiak, Superb, and will be in Comic and Scala after the facelift. We've seen them today, the first look on the Scala and Comic, and there's no way, absolutely zero chance that you cannot put it in an Octavia. Anyway, we're in town now, so we're gonna pop it into normal again. So the car is going to go easier and the steering wheel is more, you know, easy to control. It's not as stiff. Yep. This is a very good daily car. I do like the idea of this car having sound and it gives you a better feeling when you drive the car with the sports engine mode, with the sports speaker mode to be exact. So I do drive with it most of the time or when I have the car, I drive with it most of the time. And I can see myself justifying it easily because you get a better feeling from the car. And now two things that we have to do every single drive, parking camera slick, same in the Octavia that we dressed drove before, which I think is going to apply for the horn as well, but Same horn, still sounds great. Still think that it's the best horn that Skoda right now has. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, 
please subscribe, like, and share with your friends. And I'll talk to you and see you, or you'll see me, not me, the car, in the next video. Thank you. Bye.